to your budget. Budget. One word, endless possibilities. I know what you're thinking. Why is the kid telling me about budgets? It's because our nation's budget has a huge impact on kids. First, federal budgets fund all sorts of programs, including ones that build better brains, like mine, and eventually make for better citizens. Second, budgets are statements of current priorities, including investments in the future. The bridges, schools, and public safety systems we have today reflect the previous generation's priorities and their investments in us. Third, because I'm too young to vote, so I need you to be my voice. We live in a representative democracy, which means that you elect leaders to work for you by making decisions you agree with. Being an engaged citizen means checking in on our leaders to make sure they're making good on their promises. It's up to you to make sure moms and kids are prioritized. Every year, the process of writing and passing a federal budget is as complicated and full of conflicts as you'd expect. But the good news is, is that in all that back and forth, there are many opportunities for your voice to be heard. Here's a month-by-month -month action calendar. In February, the President considers the request from all of our federal government agencies and submits their budget proposal that incorporates his or her spending priorities for each federal program as well as new investments for the future. This is a great time to reach out through your representatives in Congress through calls, emails, letters, and meetings to tell them how the President's budget helps or hurts kids. In March, the House and Senate take a look at what the President has proposed and then begins the process of writing their own budget. Sometimes they adopt the President's spending priorities, but often they use their own by putting together what's called a budget resolution. We've got a resolution, so everything's resolved, right? Well, we've still got a long way to go. In April, the House of Representatives and Senate pass their own budget and resolutions and then meet in a conference committee to work out differences between their budgets. Sometimes it takes a couple of months for them to work out differences, but eventually they pass one budget that they agree on together. If you want to prioritize kids, now is the time to speak up. Congressional offices put together their own budget requests, but without pressure from Save the Children Action Network and people like you, they don't go far. This is another opportunity to send emails, make calls, schedule meetings, and show up to town halls. In June and July, the House and Senate Appropriations Committees, say it with me now, appropriation, each take the budget resolution and divide it up for each of their 12 subcommittees, which then prepare individual appropriation bills. These bills determine how much each individual program is given to spend. Save the Children Action Network's volunteers can play a big role during this time to protect funding for specific kids' programs. So don't forget, be present, be prepared, be loud. It's August, it's hot, and it's been a long trip. Not to be cliche, but are we there yet? Members of Congress have left D.C. and are back home in their districts, ready to hear from their constituents. Remember, Nothing gets members of Congress's attention like a face-to-face -face meeting. In September, vacation is over. Back to school for me, and back to work for Congress. Assuming that the House and Senate vote to approve all 12 appropriations bills and iron out their differences between the House and Senate's bills, the budget goes back to where it started, to the President's desk to be signed, and we're good to go. Priorities set, agencies and programs funded. Whew. That's in a perfect world and a perfectly functioning government. So yeah, not that. The process hasn't worked that way for a long time. Congress's fiscal calendar starts October 1st, so if they can't agree on a budget by September 30th, the government will shut down. But a government shutdown makes everyone look bad. So instead, Congress passes a continuing resolution that funds the government on a temporary basis. This means that basically everyone gets what they got last year until the new budget is passed by Congress and signed by the President. Seems fair, but since we want programs to grow and become more effective, that's basically called a budget cut. And sometimes Congress runs out of time to pass out each bill individually, so they pass an omnibus, which is one big bill that includes all 12 appropriations bills, which finally the president signs. So what do you think? Simple, right? Nope, it's really complicated. 
but it's important to show Congress that we are paying attention at each step along the way. Using your voice is the most powerful way to protect investments in kids' futures here in the U.S. and around the world.